Hello survivors, welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. I'm your host, Jeffrey Card, and today we're here to show you Update 20, which is coming out this week. We'll give you the exact date and time later on in the stream, uh, but we're really excited about Update 20. Now, uh, I should give you sort of a little bit of background. Usually when we do one of these giant full-featured updates, uh, things like, you know, when we added Green Zone or when we added outfits to the game, um, you know, there's... It's really, really exciting, but it's also risky because whenever you're adding a bunch of features, whenever you're making a bunch of changes, uh, it also introduces the risk of bugs getting added into the game. And so we always want to spend a lot of time uh, very carefully, you know, doing a lot of playtesting, making sure that the game is ready to go out the door. Um, and so we've actually got some really big new features that we're excited about that are coming out in the fall. Uh, they're coming out a little bit later. And so in the meantime, while we're working on those, uh, we still have one thing that we always need to do every single month, which is update the Bounty Broker. So uh, so this update 20 uh, is basically, it's a Bounty Broker update. What we're doing is uh, over time, we're gonna try to build up until we have at least 12 unique packs that the Bounty Broker can offer. Uh, so some months you're gonna, getting, you're gonna be getting brand new ones. Sometimes you're gonna be getting uh, you know, old favorites coming back. And that's what we're doing this month is we're bringing back an old favorite. We're bringing back the Go Bag. But we're not just bringing back the original Go Bag that you already knew. Uh, we're making some changes to it. We've added a few new things to it. And to help us understand uh, what this new Go Bag is all about, uh, we brought in a couple of our favorite people, starting with Brant Fitzgerald. Brant, how you doing? I'm a favorite person? I don't think so. I'm one, you're one of my favorite people. Uh, you can't tell Aww. me who my favorite people are, Brand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you have no business telling me what my favorites are. Uh, Good to see everybody. <laughs> we also have Mark Lautenbach. Mark? Hello! There he is! It's Mark Lautenbach. So, uh, Brant and Mark are two of, uh, of our weaponsmiths. They're, you know, the people who are most involved in creating a lot of the content that comes out with the, with the Bounty Broker. And so, together, we are going to be playing through uh, the, uh, sort of a, an unreleased build of the game and showing you all of the new stuff that you're going to have access to. Before we do that, though, let me take a quick little break uh, to point out this Instagram post uh, that Megan highlighted for me. Uh, this is GTA Joker GTA 5, who apparently loves Grand Theft Auto. Um, and they say, there's no known end date in this fight against COVID-19, and the Red Cross needs the help of blood and platelet donors to ensure blood products are readily available for weeks to come. Do your part and donate. Heart. Um, and so they're showing off the, uh, the, the Blood Mobile, which is a vehicle in our game that we're using to sort of highlight the fact that we partnered with the Red Cross uh, to really promote the idea that folks need to give blood, especially during this summer. Summer is always a dry season uh, for, for blood donations, and uh, you know people are even more intimidated by it these days because they're worried about getting sick. The Red Cross has put tons of extra measures in place to make sure that people are safe when they're giving blood. So uh, look into it. Uh, we've actually got a link that you can follow. I know a lot of you have seen this before, but in case you're new, uh, stateofdecay.com slash redcross. Go there and see all of the options that are at your disposal. And now all that said, let's actually get into the game. So Mark and I are both in the game here. And actually, you know what? I kind of want to start with a different character. Let me grab Sylvia. So... Uh for all the people who are commenting, Jeffrey has other, there's other people in his household with uh, meetings going on. That's why he's talking so slow. So. Yeah, so hopefully, I'm hoping you folks can hear me still well enough. Uh, normally, I'm just speaking really, really loudly and like blasting out my mic and, and, and you know, uh, peaking constantly. Uh, I'm trying really hard not to do that this time so that I'm not driving everybody else crazy in the house and making it impossible for, you know, for, for meetings and things to happen in the other room. Um, but it is weird. Like, it doesn't sound like me when I'm not just screaming at the top of my lungs, does it? You're anyway. You sound just fine. <laughs> okay, so let's, before we look at anything else, let's run out here and talk about one of the new or, or at least altered items that we have uh, in the go bag. And that is the G45 Burst. Now, th what was this originally called? It was a G45, what, what's the abbreviation for like the earthy color that it is? FDE. FDE, the G45 FDE. So we realized it wasn't that different from the regular old G45. Uh, and so we added a burst setting to it. And so now you can actually fire three round bursts. And I noticed because we're playing with a kind of a new community at one of the lower difficulty levels, I'm not seeing a lot of zombies out here. It could also zombies. be that it could also be that I was uh, cheating a little bit. I might have just broken all of the zombies. So let me real quick do some cheating to make some zombies appear. I'm just gonna make a million zombies. Jeffrey says that, and then Mark's face takes over. Oh He's yeah. A zombie. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, okay, oh, look. Look at all these zombies we've got. All right, so... There we go. So if you miss that first headshot, maybe the second one's going to hit. At the very least, you get a lot more stopping power from hitting these guys with multiple shots than you do just by hitting them with one. So one thing you might notice is that for a burst firing, for a burst firing gun, uh, I've got pretty good recoil control right here. And now part of it is the fact that I think I've got a pretty powerful character. I've got gunslinging, um, you know, maxed out. So that's part of it. But I mean, it's not like I'm an assault specialist or anything. You notice there's something attached to the front of this pistol. Uh, this is called a compensating suppressor. Uh, why don't I detach this and have a look at it? So the compensating suppressor is a brand new muzzle mod uh, for, for guns. That's basically, it's, it's a new kind of suppressor that it has the, a lot of the advantages of a suppressor and the advantages of a brake. It doesn't do anything to your durability. It's a little, uh, it's not quite as quiet. It's a little bit louder than other suppressors. So in Nightmare, you know, it's a little bit riskier to use than the other suppressors, uh, but it doesn't hit your durability and it gives you additional control and additional power the way that a brake does. So it's not like, it's not gonna, you know, compete or beat the other suppressors or beat the other brakes, but it's a little bit of, of a combination of both which uh, is something I think people will find really interesting. That is a new, uh, a new item that you can get in the, in the updated version of the go-bag. Um, looks like Mark has actually one of the other go-bag weapons here on his back. What is that one? This is... Hang on, this is <laughs> here, I'll, I'll follow you around. Here we are. What is that? This is... What is this thing, Brant? I, I, I have forgotten what it's called. It's the Doomsday Carbine? Yeah, but it's a, carbine. it's a USP. The USB was like a cool. with a gigantic drum magazine. And I think yeah, I, and it's yeah. 45, which is not common among your uh, rifles. So this is a rifle, meaning it doesn't shoot uh, fully automatic. It's semi-automatic. But man, you can just like, fire that thing all day. I mean, how, how, what, what's its capacity? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that yeah, nonsense. That, that's a civilian version of the UMP. Oh, yes. that's right. Which is which is a it's, uh, that's a fully auto like submachine gun, isn't it, or or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Which rifle. means this one has got a uh, stock that you can't take off, so it's molded into the body. Oh yeah. But ours has a really cool paint job, <laughs> which, you, which you cannot get it. So you I am just absolutely it. convinced that I've broken all of the zombies. Uh, so I'm going to quickly uh, I'm going to I'm going to try something else to try to make the zombies come back because I want to have some natural zombie encounters here. So, okay, hopefully that thing I just did worked. Take your suppressors off. Oh, yeah, I guess actually that would probably make a bit. I've already taken mine off, so... Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think I did fix it, because now we've got a naturally spawned zombie way down the range. Okay, so I'm sure that people might have noticed uh, something on my character's back. You've been staring at my character's back this entire time. Uh, I know I have been. <laughs> yeah, so I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm kind of hiding it when I'm aiming, but uh, this is the bug out bag. So let's have a look at look at the stats on this guy. So the bug out bag is an eight slot backpack that's got the profile of a seven slot backpack. So one one of the you know concerns that people have sometimes is that you know if they want to have an eight slot backpack, they have to carry this gigantic hiking pack that sort of towers over your head and basically takes over your entire profile. And so with the bug out bag, you don't have to deal with that. You can have all eight slots that you want in your backpack, but uh, but it's basically, you know, it's got it's got the, the kind of the low profile of uh, your typical sort of normal uh, backpack, and it's got this gorgeous orange color scheme, which I absolutely, I mean, I'm kind of a big fan of the color orange, uh, so maybe it's just <laughs> my favorite thing. But there we go. So so it's basically the best backpack in the game now. This is available in uh, in, in the go bag as well. Um, I've also got this tow hitch club. So I believe that this is one of the other weapons that. Uh, folks made some changes too. Isn't that, isn't that right? Let me check on the patch notes here. Who are you asking? Uh, well, if you guys happen to know, I, I think that Brian actually did the retuning of a lot of these things, so I know it wasn't yeah. you guys. Okay, yeah, so looking at the patch notes, um, so I already went over the G45 burst, uh, and then the Toe Hitch Club has also had some changes. It says, this blunt melee weapon is a little underused by players, so it received a significant boost to its knockdown, a moderate increase in durability, and a small improvement to impact. We also slightly increased its swing cost to balance these improvements. So if I, again, as always, 
uh, cheat a whole bunch of zombies in front of me. Let's make that happen. All the zombies are appearing. Ah! <laughs> I just uh, kind of shocked Mark a little bit. Let's run in there and try to knock some fools down. Oh. So notice how one or two hits consistently taking all the zombies down. So the Toe Hitch Club is now much more powerful as a crowd control weapon. And also a Mark Lautenbach special. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, it, and, it, and it matches... Oh, get off me. And it matches the uh, the bug out bag really nicely. It's got the same orange and black color scheme. So if that's your thing, it is my thing. <laughs> uh, a Kina shark. It is a blunt weapon. It's not a heavy weapon. That's right. Yeah. So so you want to use it with your striking skill, uh, not not necessarily the powerhouse skill. And uh, yeah, you see that she you know because she's running around carrying it in the one hand. So there we go. That is a toe hitch club. Uh, let's yeah, head back to base and grab some new stuff. That uh, weapon was actually made before we had uh, heavy weapons in the game, so it had to be a, a one-handed blunt. Yeah, so I think the drive shaft club is kind of its uh, spiritual successor um, uh, on the heavy weapon side. Uh, so this is sort of the lighter version of the drive shaft club. So let me switch characters right now because I've got some other folks carrying some other guns. So right here we got Crail, who is carrying the. Oh wait a minute, I just forgot. I think she has it. Uh, oh. Why have I just hit a slowdown? There we go. I just I just realized, I didn't mean to call her as a follower, I meant to switch to her. I think she's actually got another one in her inventory. Oh yeah, before I switch away from her, let's show off this one. So this is definitely, this one is unchanged. It's basically the same gun it's always been, but this is the Trailblazer. So it is a, uh, it is a bright blue gun. So again, this is a, you know, it, it allows you to make a fashion statement, which is really nice. Um, and it's a it's a semi-auto, and it fires. What is it that it fires? I think it's uh, nine well, mil. Yeah, nine millimeter. So basically, you, you, some of your most common pistol ammo, you can just feed yeah. into this long longer range gun. In in real life, they take um, the G seventeen mags, so they're useful in having both of those in your. And go they pack. fold in half, so it's super light. <laughs> Though not in the game. Not in, <laughs> not in the game. No. But yeah, but it is, but it is super light. I think it you know, only weighs eight pounds, which is nice, just like the human head. Um, so you know, it's it's a perfect matchup to its its primary target. Jeff knows that was obscure. That, that's a reference to Jerry Maguire. I don't actually know if the fact is true. It's just a thing that the kid in Jerry Maguire says all the time. Um, okay, so now now let's switch characters so that we can show off uh, the revolver. Angel Eyes, we're getting to the different colors of guns. I'm, I'm sure you'll see a purple gun in State of Decay at some point. <laughs> All right, so this guy, uh, let's head... Actually, you know what? Let's see if we can drive around and, and see if I really have uh, broken all the zombies or if we can find, get in some trouble. Let's go get in a vehicle. So we've got a few different vehicles to choose from here. We've got a, you know, a pretty standard Norma. You know, one of our favorite, uh, one of our favorite trucks. We've got an apocalypse version of Norma, which you know everybody. If you just grab a, an upgrade kit, you can you can make one of these out of a Norma. But then we've got something new. Uh, this is the Mad Norma. And oh yeah. <laughs> so you can see it's got this beautiful sort of brass finish and all the trim. It's got uh, this lovely custom nameplate and a beautiful two tone color scheme that you won't see anywhere else. It is completely gorgeous and. It is fun to drive. So let me, uh, Mark. I don't think you're legitimately sitting in the back of that. <laughs> I'm worried about driving around with with, with you not in a seat belt. Okay, shotgun. Okay. So let's go out there and see if I actually have destroyed all the zombies in the game, or uh, if we can go rustle up some trouble. That sounded so great. My new favorite. <laughs> so great. My new favorite vehicle. So yeah, we're just driving down the street. Let's see what we can. Uh, yeah, this is looking. Oh, wait, this is looking. Oh, there's the zombies. Oh, there. Okay, there's a bunch of zombies up there. Hey guys, let's uh, get some attention from these zombies, and then, oh, the old Mad Max blower sticking out the hood. <laughs> oh, sorry, just hit it slow down. Sometimes that happens on the dev kit. There we go. All right, so there, hey, I see somebody trying to get away. They're up there. All right, so this is 
the Pro, uh, the, the 9mm Pro 986 revolver. Uh, there have been a couple of changes made to this one. It uh, It's just got increased... Ah, whoa! There. I was derelict in my duties. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> nice, nice having my back. Oh, <laughs> let me just... Uh, oh, well, I'm sort of looking at my OBS screen. It makes it really hard for me to aim. There we go. Or maybe I'm just terrible at aiming by myself. All right. Anyway, I, I, I wasn't going to comment on your aim. Yeah, no, that was Jeffrey. that was some of the worst shooting I've ever done. That was humiliating. Cam uh, Fitzgerald is very new. <laughs> the fighter's awesome outfit. So, yeah, it's not the best. Skills right so that so I I should tell you what what Mark is referring to is uh, his character's name is Champ. His character's name is actually Champ Fitzgerald, which is great because you know, well, you guys know why. Anyway, all I'm, all I'm saying is that character better make it through this stream. <laughs> So that is a Pro 986 revolver. It's more accurate. It's got you know easier to control recoil than uh, the, its previous incarnation. But otherwise, not a whole lot about that one has changed. Let's uh, let's head back and grab yet more guns. More guns. So I'm gonna hop out and switch characters again. Unfortunately, this is a new campaign, so I haven't actually placed any outposts throughout the map. That would have been a better place to change characters. I'll have to remember that next time. But, here, let's switch to Ariella. Hey, Mark. Um, yeah. When, seeing as we have lots and lots of weapons, lots and lots of guns, how do you, when, when you're tasked with coming up with something new for the game, what is your approach? How do you... Uh, how do you go forward trying to make these cool weapons that you've made? Um, well, first of all, I look for a gap. What's something we haven't done before, either looks-wise or functionality-wise? And if I can find one of those, and I, if I find like a function gap, I try to find something that would work with that gap. Um, then you got something like the Doomsday, where we needed more stuff in 45. So the ump is a obvious thing to fill that gap. So I made the ump and then the uh, the rifle version um, just to have more things that you can use 45 with. Plus, I really, really like the look of, what's the, UMC? U USP. USP. And, uh, you know, I've seen it in other games and it's just got such a cool look to it. So. Yeah, I really. I it was one of my favorite there. ones in I think Modern Warfare Two. I just I use an ump constantly in that game. It's like, a, I don't know. I like I like I like guns. I tend to like guns that are you know a little bit uh, slower, heavier, easier to control, uh, yeah. but also hit really hard. And so between that and the Scar H are always my favorite in, in, in Modern Warfare Two. They're super fun to shoot in real life too. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> okay, so just yeah. weird stuff that comes out of my head, like the uh, the ore saw. <laughs> uh, I was at my uncle's cabin and I had to make something to kill zombies this is what would happen okay I think that was the last zombie in the siege yeah okay we're good so let's head out and uh, find some targets for this uh, this AK let me see how much oh we got a ton of influence so we can actually we could probably claim an outpost out here and switch characters without having to run all the way back home, which would be nice. So, uh, yeah. Tuna Dane asks, are these all new weps, uh, weapons or, or stat rebalances of weapons already in our lockers? Well, was that a... Oh, yeah, that's a bloater. Please so, don't kill me. <laughs> in they're mostly uh, revisiting existing weapons. Uh, so if you already earned these... Oh, yeah, uh, you're, we need to talk about that. They're going to automatically propagate to the stuff that's already in your uh, lockers. That's right. So if you had a G45 FTE, it is now a G45 burst. Uh, it's magically changed, and so now you've got the burst fire option uh, that you didn't have before. Uh, so yeah, so none of the guns um, are brand new. Uh, a, f a few of them have been uh, rebalanced. In fact, I think the one we're about to show you, I can find a nice place to try it. Maybe I, may, I just need to probably just cheat myself a bunch of zombies. Let me just get Did we already honk the horn? What? I hadn't even heard go. that yet. Okay, best horn in the game, obviously. <laughs> let's go. Let's go fight a plague heart. 
If we want to get in some trouble, that's how to do it, right? Okay, so the la so we already talked about how the G45 burst has been uh, updated to include the burst fire mode. We talked about how the uh, the 9mm Pro 96 revolver has been made a little more accurate, a little easier to control. The tow hitch club has been rebalanced to hit harder. And the last weapon that's actually changed is uh, the Classic AK. The Classic AK has less sway and less recoil, and the weight has been bumped up a little bit. So it's like, you know, like we were talking about with the, you know, like the ump and the scar. It's like it's a, it's a, it's a heavier, easier to control weapon. And especially if you've got a compensating suppressor on it, it's really easier to control. <laughs> that sounds so cool. <laughs> yeah, the, the audio on, on these guns when they have the... Like, so the compensating suppressor, um, the, the audio team did a full pass on this thing to, like, to, to make sure that it made a sound that was that was different, that it really changed the way that guns sounded when you put it on. So, I mean, the suppressors and the existing you know brakes already did that. And, but they, they, this one even sounds unique on top of those. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, and for some of you chatting about, about the fact that we didn't change, I mean, that you're, we're not inter introducing much that's new. We don't always have uh, the schedule to do everything new, um, but what that allows us to do is do some larger changes in other updates. Yeah, exactly. Like if we, if we only spent, like basically, you know, a month to make this pack and a month to make that pack and a month on that pack each pack would have to be very small but if we for instance bring back an old pack like the go bag add only a couple of small things to it we have a whole two months to make the next pack really amazing and that's sort of like the the little preamble that i did at the beginning is to try to get the message across that even though this pack is intentionally uh, uh, uh you know this update is intentionally a very small update the reason it's small is because we have big things in the works so we want to make sure we fully play tested and tuned and gotten right before we uh release them to you so you should expect that to come hmm, in the next month or so but for now uh you know this is what we've got so uh, so let me make sure that I've hit everything. So we uh, we hit all of the altered guns, the guns that have been retuned. Uh, we hit uh, the compensating suppressor, the bug out bag, and Mad Norma. So now all we've got left is just kind of a review of the other weapons that that are not changing, but that are just you know coming back into the game. So let's uh, let me just claim this place as an outpost so I can switch characters and show you some some other stuff. Uh, Killing Academy, uh, you're looking at the design director for State of Decay Two. Uh, That's Jeffrey. What was what, what was their question? Who's this <laughs> idiot playing the game? Now they asked uh, who's design director now that Foggy has moved on. Oh, and okay. So for State of Decay Two, it's Jeffrey. Yeah, so it, I actually um, went camping with Foggy this past weekend. It was really cool to see him again because yeah, he's he's uh, moved on to uh, other pretty exciting, interesting projects, and I'm sure he'll be able to talk to you guys about sometime in the future. Uh, but yeah, for right now, uh, I'm doing that job. And why did I leave? I was going to switch characters. That's mm -hmm. it, we started talking about me, and I got completely distracted. My brain just turns off whenever we start talking about me. Okay, so let's switch to Kate. What does Kate have to show us? Uh, anybody who's bringing up questions about bugs, uh, support.stateofdecay.com. Oh, that's yeah. where you report those, and you'll get information on those on. On bugs there as well. Yeah, you know, we really have uh, you know a, a, a crack support team made primarily out of Joe Swarner, uh, Jawa Fala. He's uh, he's one of our favorite people. He's he's frequently on the stream and he's and he usually moderates, I believe, on Twitch. Um, so yeah, so he fields a lot of these things. He knows he knows the answers to so many technical questions already. He can give you really quick answers for some of those. And if you bring up something that's novel and new that he doesn't have an easy solution for, he can bubble that up to us. And he's a like staunch advocate for players. Like he, you know, he he comes after the rest of us like a like a bloodhound getting us to fix things uh, that players are seeing uh, their problems in the game. So if you're having a problem, definitely go talk to that guy. I just send a ticket to support.stateofdecay.com and uh, I'll help you out. So, uh, uh, yeah. Real quick, Andy Pims, I'm going to ask you not to pimp your mod in our chat, please. Um, so, okay, so this is the MPX submachine gun. Uh, this is a familiar one. We haven't made any changes to it. This is one that uh, that already exists in uh, in the game. And so, actually, let's see. Is there another nearby play cart we can go after? Because I've got a couple of different guns to show up. Actually, oh, there's one right near our house. That seems like a problem. Let's uh, let's go take out the play guard near our house so we can show off uh, what these what this gun does. Wait, where'd Mark go? I had to change oh, characters. So. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh my god, I love that car. Mark, come on. Come on. All right, I'm coming. Hey, fall down. Good to see you. 
<laughs> All right, here we go. Let's take Mad Norma back. One of the nice things, like in the wake of update 19, you know, you can basically off-road your way practically anywhere. I don't know if there's necessarily really hard obstacles between me and that destination, but I'm going to try to get there without following the roads. Um, so there's still a lot of fun stuff to play with just from the previous update. Now that our cars could actually handle being off-road. Yes. Much better than they did before. Yeah. yeah. Now the Norma doesn't, you know, uh, her tires are not the grippiest, and so you can sometimes uh, you know, find yourself spinning out a little bit. But okay, wait, is that a huge wall in front of me? Probably is. I'm going to get back on the road just to not waste everybody's time. I'm going the right way, right? Yeah. So, while we're headed up there, um, what you guys playing, by the way, aside from State of UK 2? Uh, Chord 88, I don't know what you're talking about. What am I ignoring? Because there's like 30,000 messages that are flashing by my screen. <laughs> At least. So uh, I've been pretty excited about this <laughs> this uh, indie game that just came out called Spiritfarer. Maybe because I'm a sucker for games that are about building a community. But it's this very quiet little um, sort of character-driven, um, like, non-violent game where you play a little girl who's replaced Charon as the person who ferries people to the afterlife. And so you're just uh, collecting these little animal spirits and making a boat where they can live with you until they've, uh, you know, resolved all their personal problems and are ready to go to heaven. Or hell. I, I, you, actually, I'm assuming you're probably selling all these animals to hell. Uh, but it's, it's a pretty fun, weird little game. So you should uh, definitely check. That, that's, that's sort of my pick of the week, I guess, as, as games that have been fun for me. Oh, look. I've been, I've been grinding away on Ghost of Tsushima and uh, then just just to stay like in touch with other humans, I played Division 2 with my clan. Oh, yeah. Oh. I know you're a big uh -oh. fan of that one. There we go. So yeah, the MPX is pretty good at putting a lot of lead down range. Whoa. Oh, I see. I see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that gun is effectively a flamethrower. Like people who ask for a flamethrower, they yeah, just don't realize it's already in the game. It's I mean, you know, the fireworks it, fireworks it rockets throws, are it throws fire. Flamethrower. Yeah, pretty By much. Definite. It throws something and then the thing is on fire. Uh, okay, so that's that's the MPX. We've also got... Oh, so I already gave you the Doomsday Carbine, so they've already seen the Doomsday Carbine, but in case they wanted to look at... Um, wait, where is it? There, it's up here. Uh, if they wanted to look at the stat block uh, for the Doomsday Carbine, there it is. So, Oh, you know what game I've been playing, Jeffrey? What? It's, uh, what's the... It's Xbox... Uh, Grounded? Game Pass. No, the digital... Uh, Devolver. Devolver with the monster. Oh, oh, Carrion! Carrion. Carrion, yes. I, I actually just won Carrion the other day. That game is bizarre. It's a side scroller where you play this. It's basically like you're a plague heart. You're a walking plague heart. <laughs> anybody, anybody who loves body horror, like the old thing movie, oh my god, so good. Yeah, no, that is that thing is crazy. Um, let me okay. see. Yeah, let's let's head back to the house. I think I've got one more gun to show. And... Hey, speaking of games that we're playing, who are we? What are we going to be playing? Next week? Coming up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so so next week, uh, we're doing kind of an unusual stream. Usually we play our own game on this stream, because, you know, that's what we're here for. But we realized, you know what, we've got sister studios. And, um, you know, and they've got exciting games that are out too. So next week, we're actually going to be playing uh, co-op in Grounded with Obsidian. So it's going to be on our channel here, uh, in the same place, in the same bat channel that you can always find us at. Uh, but we're going to have a guest from Obsidian. We're going to be playing Grounded, and they're going to be giving us tips because, uh, you know, we're, we really love Grounded over here. We think it's a, a lot of fun. Um, and uh, But I'm not as good at Grounded as I'd like to be. So we'll get some, some tips and tricks from these folks and, and see what the latest is, because uh, I believe that game is still, uh, it's still early access. And so they're you know, actively developing it right now. And, uh, and so we'll get to see the latest and, and, and you know, learn everything we can about it. So if you're interested at all in Grounded, which is, for those of you who haven't heard of it, it's like basically Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the game. Um, if, you're, if you're interested in Grounded, uh, you should definitely come here next week. So I've just got the last, I believe this is the last gun uh, on the list, which is the, uh, what's it called? It's called the M590 FDGB. 
shotgun. <laughs> so it's a beautiful golden brassy colored shotgun. That's it almost it almost goes with uh, the Mad Norma. Not quite. It's like halfway between the brass on the Mad, Mad Norma and the orange on the bug out bag. So it's like it sort of ties the room together uh, if you're if you're going this way. But uh, yeah, so let's we'll, we'll go out on the road again. Maybe we'll find here. Oh, there's some infestations we can take out. Let's let's go make our there's people like happy. He ties the room together. He ties the room together exactly. Um, oh, yeah. don't go boom! What are you talking about? That's not for anybody in spe specifically. Yeah, no, uh, exactly. We don't we don't do that. Um, we don't do that. That's not a thing to do. So let's let's go take out an infestation and then we'll go by the bounty broker. So I've I've unlocked all I, I sort of cheated to unlock all the bounties so that we can have all these weapons. Um, and so we can't actually show you what the bounties are and what they look like in the bounty broker because I've already unlocked them all. But we do want to talk a little bit about, you know, what's coming, what's going, and uh, sort of give you an update on where the bounty broker feature is going. Screen. Oh no, these guys are so creepy. Probably let that guy get you, and I'll go after these folks. Ooh, okay, yeah, another quick slowdown. I think our dev kit is just kind of doing something that it game <laughs> that uh, machines don't usually do. All right. <laughs> what was that nonsense? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, two can play at that game. Mark's playing with his food. Uh, you can play, yeah. you can oh, play baseball. I accidentally killed him. I, f I hit the wrong button. <laughs> so you should hit that guy out of the air when Mark throws him to you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> zombie baseball. Awesome. <laughs> we should add, we should we should add an achievement for that. Zombie baseball. Like you know, kill kill a zombie moments after it was thrown by another character. Okay, well, let's, uh, now that we've seen uh, the M590 in action, let's head down to talk to the Bounty Broker and talk about which packs are leaving, which packs are coming in the future, and which direction Jeffrey's supposed to drive to get to where he's trying to go. There we are. Is this the way I want to drive? Kind of. Sure. There, there. Charlie Callahan says, are you guys aware that the heavy weapons aren't increasing fighting? Um, huh. I'm not aware I of that. Definitely have to check with uh, with Joe on that. Yeah, that's not that's not crazy though. That is an easy. Th I I know exactly how that mistake would happen. That's an easy mistake to make. So I would not be surprised if that's the case. So uh, yeah, well, we should log a bug about that. So and say, Joe's hey. probably badly typing that they already know, but hopefully uh, <laughs> it's something that is already being worked looked at. All right, so. Uh, Joe is typing. He's madly typing. There's only yeah. one way. There's only one way he types. <laughs> don't, don't type angry. Hey. Oh, I you got, got him. Thanks. <laughs> I don't even know what that was. <laughs> All right. So, with the arrival of the go bag, uh, that means we've lost a bounty pack. Let me see. Remind myself which one it is. I think it was. Was it the anniversary that went away? Let's see here. Um, oh, the pawn shop. Okay, so yeah. So if you go into your game right now, the current game that's out there released, you'll see that there's a pawn shop pack at the Bounty Broker. The pawn shop pack is no longer on the list as of update 20. And so if you've got any last minute pawn shop items you want to get, go get them now because it's, it's not going to be long before uh, the go bag shows up and takes its place. Um, and so let's see here. And so... Yeah, so Poncha Pack went away, the Go Bag is coming in, and then we've actually, we're actually announcing in advance, which is something we don't always do. Um, interesting. I think my game seems to have frozen. I are you still playing? To the back of this truck. Are you, are you able to play, Mark? I'm not. I'm, I thought I was stuck to the back of the truck, but it may be just frozen. Huh. I'm, un, I'm unstucking. Interesting. Okay, well, something weird happened. We'll definitely make sure people know about that. Um, but okay, in the meantime, let me just switch. I'm gonna switch over here, and uh, maybe I'll restart the game. Let's see here. Anyway, um, 
What was I talking about? Oh yeah, so we've actually, uh, we're actually ready to announce uh, what the next pack is gonna be that comes the following month. Um, that pack is gonna be called the Open Range Pack. Uh, here's the description that's in the patch notes. This pack blends elements of old and modern West to create a collection that evokes images of ranching and rustling alike. So whether you dream of quick drawing a pearl handled revolver, or you just wanna look rugged and wistful in your cowboy hat and denim jacket, this is the pack for you. We were talking a little bit about, yeah, Mark is so excited. Mark's actually been advocating for this for a really long time. Partly because, uh, you know, we were talking about the potential for, you know, new animations associated with guns. We did sneak in maybe a couple of new animations that might be familiar to anybody who's fired some, uh, some, uh, some Old West weaponry. So you'll have to wait for that until next month, but uh, we're going to have a lot of interesting stuff to share there. So that was me talking instead of... Uh, quitting the game and restarting it so that we can get back into the action. So now I'm quitting the game and restarting it so I can get back into the action. Um, so yeah, so basically, uh, so that's going on. And then of course, this is gonna be your last chance. So if we actually go back over to our little Red Cross uh, link over here, that Bloodmobile, this is also gonna be your last chance to grab that. The following month, the Bloodmobile is no longer gonna be available from the radio option uh, that it currently is. So if you love the Bloodmobile, definitely go get that. So go out there, get your last pawn shop stuff, get your last, uh, well, actually, you don't need to get your last Bloodmobile yet. You've got all month uh, to, to get a Bloodmobile because it's going away later on. But there, so there, but there is stuff that's going to be going away at least for a little while. As we've always said, by the way, when something goes away in our game, that doesn't mean it's gone forever. The Wizard Van went away for a while and then it came back. Uh, each of these uh, packs, you know, the World War II pack went away for a while, the Go Bag went away for a while, and we've brought them back. Um, and so it's not like, you know, when, when these uh, when these packs go away, that doesn't mean that you're never going to see them again. It just means that, you know, we basically just don't want to overwhelm players. When a new player gets into our game, we don't want them to look at 12 bounty packs. And it's just overwhelming array of things to do that just sort of can lead to choice paralysis and just make it feel like, well, just, I don't know what to do. Um, so we don't want to do that. So we give people, you know, there's four packs available at any given time. Uh, it's sort of a little sliding window across the, the full list that eventually will add up to 12. And uh, yeah, so, you know, right now I'm reloading the game. Hopefully I'll be able to get Mark in here and everything too, and, and, and we'll be fine. Uh, but so let me see. Yeah. Charlie Callahan on YouTube says, can you guys add 70s clothing? I'd love to kill zombies with sparkly flares. Um <laughs> We I do I have that, that sequin hat. It's called, it's called the Disco Inferno pack. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so it, so it should it should be all 70s outfits and then flame weapons, right? Sure, sure. Okay, so I have I gotten it. I have gotten back into the game. I'm going to invite uh, Mark back into it. Yay. Did you get the invite, Mark? Yep. Okay, well, let's switch back to playing again. Hi, nothing bad happened. Everything's okay. Um... Oh, interesting. It looks like we abandoned this car here during a previous stream. I just keep using the same save game again and again and again. I'm just collecting detritus from past streams. So yeah, so as of update 20, uh, the available bounties are going to be the Go Bag. We have the World War II pack, which we you know re-released last, uh, last month. We've got the Plunder pack from two months ago, and the Anniversary pack from three months ago. And so... Uh, so now the anniversary pack, I believe, is the one that's on the bubble, the one that's getting ready to leave as soon as it, as soon as the open range pack arrives. So for right now, for this moment, go out there and do your pawn shop pack bounties. And then once update 20 drops, start focusing on those anniversary pack bounties because you'll only have a month left for those. All right, so there is another just a couple of items that are that did come in with this uh, with this pack. So you'll notice. Oh, actually, yeah, let me show you this. So there have been other changes to the way the bounty broker works. I was just talking to Zoe McClatchy about this earlier. She did some work to make sure that we can easily um, sort of recycle old packs and bring, you know, basically get this thing on a cadence so that it's much easier for us to slot in old packs, remove, uh, I mean, sorry, slot in new packs, remove old packs, but just kind of automate that whole pr uh, procedure. And at the same time, um, you know, right here, this is showing that I have already gotten all these bounties because I cheated. But... Uh, if I had actually had these bounties fresh, uh, and if I had completed them, because I already 
uh, had earned all of these go bag items, if I had already earned them in the past, then when I unlocked them, not only would I unlock the item for free, which is what you usually get, I would also get bonus influence. Um, and so that'll be the same for you. If any of you, anybody out there has already earned go bag bounties, when uh, the go bag arrives again, all those bounties will be reset. Uh, so it's not like, you know, it won't be this pack arriving and then there's nothing for you to do because you've already beaten everything. Uh, the whole pack is reset uh, so that you can sort of earn those bounties again from scratch. And this time, because you've earned them in the past, you're going to get bonus influence when you, when you earn them uh, for the second time. Another uh, thing you'll, you'll notice is that we're being much clearer about which packs are leaving and which ones are coming and when. You'll notice that uh, this pack right here, the anniversary pack, says, what the? Uh, <laughs> the anniversary pack says really clearly, this pack will be retired in late September. And so you don't have to be, you know, if, you know, I really appreciate all you folks here, the thousands of you who watch the stream and watch the videos uh, that we do. Oh, gosh. Hello, zombie. Um, but no longer are you the only ones. <laughs> who know when things are coming and going. Now it's really clearly stated in the UI. Uh, so you can see it there, the, the bounty that's going to leave has got this little red uh, clock icon on it, and it tells you exactly when it's going. Um, and then similarly, this one says, this pack returned in August. So that means that this is a pack that you know you might have had before, and, and it's come back. So just a little bit more information there is available in the UI. Um, another thing we should point out is that, uh, you know, the classic AK-47, when we, you know, made some tuning changes to it, actually some of those tuning changes uh, we propagated to all of the other AK-47s. So all AK-47 firearms now have um, an increase to their horizontal recoil, which means that instead of going quite as vertically, like just, you know, shooting up the body of your target, it'll go to the left and right a little bit more than it usually did. Uh, so that's true across the board for all AK-47s. Um, the sleeper cell PPK is now properly described and categorized as an assault pistol. Uh, so that means it'll satisfy assault bounties. Um, that's the main thing, actually, that that categorization matters to. Uh, so, you know, that's good for you to know. And then finally, we already mentioned this. Um, there, there was a lot of audio work that went into um, to the compensating suppressor. In fact, the way we wrote it in the patch notes is, we revisited the audio mix on attachment-ready guns to ensure that the new compensating suppressor was well-supported. So you're going to have a lot of, uh, you know, really fun, interesting sounds to listen to when you're firing these guns with a new compensating suppressor. And that's the end of the patch notes. So we've got basically, you know, the go bag is returning, we retuned some of the weapons, we added a few things, we added the compensating suppressor, the bug out bag, and Mad Norma, which you see me driving around right here. Um, and then, you know, we made tweaks to a few more guns and we updated the bounty broker so you can tell what's, what's coming and going a lot more easily. And that's it, that's update 20. So um, that's gonna be arriving fairly soon. In fact, I mean, I know we were going to wait till the end of the stream, but, you know, we've got a little bit of time to screw around here. Do we want to uh, say exactly when it's coming out? Because this is probably the most precision we've ever been allowed to share <laughs> about when a, a pack is arriving. Yeah, uh, do you guys really want to hear it? I mean, no, they don't. You don't think they want no, to? No, probably not. Probably not. Sure. <laughs> let's, let's, see, let's see what the chat has to say. Let me, I'm going to open up my chat here and uh, see, what, see what folks are saying about whether or not they want to know when this is coming out. Oh, oh, Mr. Barbecue says, let's hear it. Says, let's get on with it. Yes, yes. Lots of people saying, let's hear it. Okay, fine. The group just surprised us. So, yeah, sorry, folks. Oh, oh, somebody, oh. Yeah, he ruined it. All right, McGurk. Okay, we're, we're going to go with what, with what McGurk says. We don't really believe in democracy here. We believe in one spoiler ruining it for everybody. Um, so, no. Okay, so it's going to be this Wednesday. So two days from when we've recorded this. Uh, this Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, Give us a little bit of flex time. Sometimes it might be 10.01 or 10.02. This is Pacific time, by the way, 10, 10 o'clock Pacific time. So Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock Pacific time is when you should expect to see this uh, show up. So you can grab the update then and play with all the toys we've been playing with. I just realized, did I just run off without Mark? Oh, you got your own car, cool. Good oh, yeah. enough. Okay, let's, since we got a little bit of time left, do you wanna take out some more play cards? I think sure. we got one just right down this road, so let's just let's head over this okay. way. Got some. Got to squeeze between these cars. There we go. Now the Norma is so much more agile now since uh, update 19. I love it. Norma's been doing some CrossFit. <laughs> core. Man, I could use some of that. Yeah, same. Wait, was that just a? Did I just hear a feral's voice, or was, oh, that, just a nor, was that a normal zombie? 
Well, we've got some pretty high-class weaponry, so if a feral comes after us, I think we're going to be fine. Yeah. Here we go. Getting so close. I think it's up here. Oh, yeah, I can tell by the blood plague zombies gathering around. Ugh, I feel like I'm underwater. All right, ready? Here we go. Okay, I'm just, okay, there's some guys coming in. Take them out. Oh no! <laughs> I'm nice. out. Oh, nice thing about tube fed shotguns, you can uh, you can be halfway through reloading oh, and still fire. Stop, stop the reload, yeah. yeah. I love that about it. It's actually one of the reasons why I kind of almost prefer those to uh, mag fed shotguns in this game. Unless that mag has thirty in it. Oh yeah, okay, the thirty, yeah, that do, that does make it a little better, doesn't it? So we'll search around here, see what we can find. Always fast search, because that's how you have fun. <laughs> yeah. Fast search is fun search. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can the Mad Norma use vehicle upgrade? It is a vehicle upgrade. Yeah, it's effectively, like, if you were to upgrade that class of vehicle, you would get a vehicle very similar to the Mad Norma. So there's kind of, yeah, kind of no point in giving it a further upgrade. All you would do is make it the same, but with a different paint job. So we just don't we just don't bother making that possible because it look it looks just like in a lot of ways. I mean, obviously it's got a really unique finish, a really unique paint job. But it's in like terms a... of its shape, it's it's very similar to uh, to the apocalypse, uh, the apocalypse Norma. Looks like I dropped. What did you say? Looks like I dropped. Oh, you dropped from the from the game. Yeah, I think you know we're we're you know streaming and playing multiplayer at the same time. Uh, I wouldn't be mm -hmm. surprised if some garbage happens a little bit there. Yeah. But let me. Um... I don't have the fastest of uh, connections. <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. Uh, and actually, you know, because we're kind of using a little bit more bandwidth than we usually do at my house, because uh, my wife and I are both using streaming video at the exact same time. Uh, so I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if our stream performance is just a little worse than it usually is. So uh, that invite just went out. Did you get it? There it is. Cool. Do you have to, Jeffrey? Do you have to run around and and unhook all your kids from their uh, Wi-Fi? We, we did do that actually. Yeah, we we we, <laughs> we booted my daughter off YouTube. She was just sort of sitting there like a zombie, staring at <laughs> staring at YouTube. Like, okay, go outside. <laughs> and we actually, outside. I, I, th oh, I think we might be physically incapable of stopping my son from staring at YouTube all the time. So we actually took him over to a friend's house. Someone who is inside our. Uh, our COVID bubble, we've been sort of, we've kind of extended our COVID bubble to uh, include another family that my daughter babysits for so that they can, you know, so they can do their jobs. And so, yeah, so we sent him over there. It's much, much easier uh, to <laughs> to be heard without him running around screaming. So, so where else can we go? It looks like we got another one down here. Oh, and I just passed the turn. Man, I love how quickly you can just sort of turn a car on a, on a dime uh, so like if you if you wanted to suddenly go and break in another direction, uh, you can just kind of quickly do a little donut to get there. It's awesome. I am Yevon. Yes, State of Decay. I agree. State of Decay merch would be awesome. Currently, the best place to find State of Decay merch is at the Sea of Thieves website. <laughs> yes. They've got some crossover merchandise uh, for, for both of, of our franchises. State of Thieves, Sea of Decay. Sea of Decay sounds a little grosser than State of Thieves. In, in in our defense, they already had an established store because yeah. people buy their merch like crazy. Um, and someday, we hope to have a very dedicated State of Decay merch store as well. <laughs> yeah, so Sea of Decay, you can imagine, is uh, whenever I picture the phrase sea, sea of Decay, I think of just like an ocean that's just full of like rotted fish corpses and things like that, which sounds really great. Um, State of Thieves, so that's just Florida, right? Oh. <laughs> just kidding, Florida. We love you. Wow. <laughs> oh, I just, okay. It, Florida just punished me by <laughs> slowing the game down. Okay, there we go. Florida may have just stalled. Okay. Yeah. Huh. I think I just. Don't Brent, stop. There we go. <laughs> Brent froze really for me for a second, so I wasn't sure if, uh, if we lost him. I'm holding really, really still. <laughs> right. 
Oh, I think he's about to blow up on you. Can we hide in this corner? Okay, yeah. I was worried that this corner wasn't going to work, but... Uh... All right, here we go. Let's blow up. It's a little just more. This might be one of them. Oh, God. Fall down favorite corners. Yes, exactly. Because if, if any zombies come around the corner, we can just hit them, too. I actually feel very safe back here. Nice. Blam. I don't know if that zombie died because of the death wave or if it died because of my shot. Oh, regular zombie. Zombie. I got in here. Oh, a fake yeah. A47. That is one of my favorite guns in the game. Yeah, if anybody wants to know all the safest locations next to Plague Hearts, just watch Fall Down Go Boom streams because he <laughs> always finds that one spot that is harder for zombies to get to you. <laughs> yeah, all right. So I'm going to dump some stuff in the back of this Norma. So it is 3.51. We still got nine minutes. So if anybody's got any, you know, novel questions for us, we would love to hear it. Bring it. Oh, okay. So uh, Joe has acknowledged, by the way, that, uh, that yeah, that, that there is a bug with, um, uh, with earning experience with uh, heavy weapons. But it looks like lethal hits does do earn your experience. It's just non-lethal hits. You know, like when you swing a heavy weapon, it hits five zombies. Those hits aren't giving you experience. Uh, but it looks like there is a bug on it, so we'll at some point uh, get around to fixing that because that wasn't the intent. We, I think, you get more experience for killing a zombie than for hitting a zombie, but you do get experience for hitting a zombie. You're supposed to get experience for just hitting a zombie. Uh, Responding to <laughs> getting your ride. All right. Oh, a, uh, oh when we were we were uh, asking each other about uh, uh, what games were on Game Pass. Uh, Joe also pointed out that Astroneer is on Game Pass, and that is actually a, one, a, a favorite of mine. I played it on PC. I haven't really played it on Xbox, but uh, I, I have a special affection for that game. Um, my, uh, my friend Cloudcraft introduced me to it, and I honestly, by myself, would never have figured it out. Uh, it, there's a lot of games like that where basically I need a friend who is much more uh, like organized and capable of things like multitasking to explain to me how to play a game, uh, and then I can get into it. He also introduced me to uh, to RimWorld, which is now my favorite game of all time. But uh, I probably never would have figured it out without somebody to sort of tell me it was good and guide me through the beginning of it. And so Astroneer is another game like that too, where it's like it can be very mysterious when you first start out, but when you get into it, it's got so much. It's basically it's a game about um, exploring uh, like alien planets. And uh, you know, remaking their terrain and using it to you know mining and discovering tunnels, and it's just all procedurally generated terrain. It's, it's a lot like No Man's Sky, honestly. Only it's with an emphasis on um, you know building and controlling your environment, and less on pure just discovery. Though I guess No Man's Sky's been moving in that direction too, hasn't it? Anyway, his uh, brother was on that team. Whose brother was on that team? A friend of mine, completely unrelated to the game industry, um, his brother just happens to be on the like, all right, small world. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, we're just going to, you know, we're going to just ride the train here. Oh, we got some, oh, yeah. oh, some hitchhikers trying to get on the train. Didn't work. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. End of the line. All right. Well, I guess if we want to get to this other play cart, we have to go back to that bridge. When's this train going to be showing up? Just jump <laughs> down that <laughs> river. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like the zombies in uh, Girl with All the Gifts, who kind of like uh, they sort of get into their old habits. Things they did a lot. They would sometimes, you know, repeat those habits even as zombies. So I imagine like people who just had a had a, a a rail commute every single day as zombies. They just come down here and they just wait for the train. You know what those zombies are saying? Trains. <laughs> Train. Oh no. <laughs> No, end the stream now. <laughs> Lewis Moore, we don't need you anymore. We've got Mark. He's officially your replacement. <laughs> uh, for those of you who've been with us for a long time, you'll remember that Lewis Moore was the uh, programmer we would bring on here anytime we needed uh, someone to fill time with really terrible jokes. Um, that was his sort of his brand at the company, is the guy with the really terrible jokes. But uh, he's actually moved on. He started a... Uh, he's he's working at a startup now with uh, some former Undead Lab folks, uh, which is uh -oh. pretty cool looking. Oh no, are we out of gas? I have not been paying any attention to my gas. Mm. Oh, excuse me, were you there? <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I might have a gas can in here. 
I do. I do have a gas can in here. Wait. All right, let's refuel this sucker. We have got five minutes left. Do you think we can take out that last plague heart five, in five minutes? Sure. Let's see if we can Shark, do it. Shark, Mark is the the designated hitter for uh, for bad jokes now because he's got this weird wiring in his brain that he can't stop, which I, is punning everything possible. I Sixty percent of my brain is devoted to bad puns. Are you uh, are you talking to someone named Shark, or do you just call him Shark Mark? No, it's a kind a kina a kina shark. Ask that okay. question. Okay, gotcha. You said Shark Mark. I was like, what? <laughs> is, uh, that his, is that his nickname? Shark now? Mark. Actually, I always shorten Mark's name to Shirk Mark. Shirk Mark. <laughs> get off me, zombies. Okay, well, I, my panic at seeing that bloater, wanting to get up and deal with the bloater, is completely cramping our style when it comes to uh, trying to hit that plague heart in time. So let's get a little bit closer in the car and then uh, see what we can do. All right. Oh, I should have brought some uh, noisemakers. I also have no ammo, so I'm just going to pipe. Oh, sweet. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. I know. Really? Yeah. No, we're going to be... Oh, Rumber's like, you we're take the here. window, stupid. All right. Let's see here. Oh, hi, oh, Bugger. There we are. See you jump in. We oh, love your We love your streams at the office, Bugger. We love them. <laughs> Oh no, okay. While you're hitting that, I will blow up any zombies that come in. Uh, is that everybody? Oh no, more. Dang it. Sorry, I'm trying to... Ah! Uh, wait. Wait. I'm just trying to fire every time I get the chance. Ah, uh, okay. I guess we gotta stop and deal with... It. Oh, I am so completely surrounded by zombies right now. <laughs> oh, I think we did it at night. That. Yeah. Well, you're indoors, Mark, so the the lighting wouldn't be much easier in here. <laughs> Snacks. All right. Snacks. There right. we go. I got to uh, reload, 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 reload. Don't hit me, zombies. Don't hit me, zombies. Weapon's about to break. There yeah. we did. Okay. Nice work, Mark. Mark gets the credit for that one. That was awesome. Ooh, what did we get? A bar. Oh, nice. So one thing to point out. Uh, update 19 brought back the World War II pack and it brought, uh, and we brought in a bunch of brand new World War II weapons. Um, and so the older World War II weapons went into loot, including Plague Heart loot. So uh, there's actually, that's actually a separate step to put into Plague Heart loot, but Bri Brian remembered at the very last minute that it needed to go in there. So now I've got a BAR uh, from World War II. So that's <laughs> cool. It is Thanks three... for noticing, Thanks for noticing. <laughs> It is 3.58, so we should probably start wrapping up the stream. So let me just remember all the things we need to say. First off, uh, we are... So update 20, which involves the go bag coming back and, and some, some tweaks to weapons, that is going to be arriving Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Oh, I'm getting attacked by zombies while I'm saying this. So that's arriving yeah. Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, next week, we are going to be... Uh, playing Grounded uh, with some friends uh, from Obsidian, our sister studio. Yeah. And so that's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm also going to be blowing the heads and body parts off zombies, which is going to be great. Uh, and I think those are our big announcements. Oh, and, and the very last thing, of course, everybody, go to stateofdecay.com slash redcross. Uh, see what you can do to uh, to participate in the Red Cross's blood drive that they're going on, that they're doing this summer. It's really, really important. You know, hospitals are going to, you know, there's they're at full capacity, they need blood uh, a lot more than usual, and they're probably getting less than usual. And so find out what you can do to, to help out that effort. And with that, I think we're basically at the end of this stream. So um, check out my beautiful backpack as we, uh, as we, as we all say goodbye. So um, let's see here. So uh, Mark, do you want to, uh, any last words you want to say to the audience? Uh, not much. Uh, thank you for coming. Thanks for uh, enjoying us and enjoying the game. And, uh, and Brant, you got anything you want to say? Well, as usual, thanks to everyone, all of our supporters. Thanks for coming out, watching us play our game, and um, enjoy it. Let us know what you think. We can't do it without you. And with that, we're going to get out of here. Next week, we're playing Co-op Grounded with Obsidian. And you can also click on these fine links if you're watching this later on YouTube. Or just be confused if you're watching it now live, because they won't be there. It's just a 
Just a big, blank, gray, burning screen. We're on fire. So much fire. <laughs> uh, it represents the dumpster fire that 